Welcome to 805 Focus. I'm Dr. Cinder Sinclair with Nonprofit Connect, and we will be bringing you the latest on your favorite nonprofits. So get ready to be inspired. Our special guest today is Robin Elander, and Robin is the executive director of Downtown Santa Barbara. Welcome, Robin. Thank you so much for having me. Oh gosh, there's so much going on these days. There is. Downtown Santa Barbara. So let's just dive in and you want to talk about an initiative? You want to talk, what, what would you like to talk about first? Oh, wow. Well, there's so much going on. Like you said, um, there's a downtown master planning process. Yes, going on, and yes. So that's a really um, important moment in time. We've reached some milestones on that project. And the future is really exciting, I think, for downtown. This is one of those like projects that is going to help us leap into the next 30 to 50 years. And so yeah. it's essentially, it's a, a redesign of a bit of the look and feel for um, what's now been known in the, as our State Street Promenade. Mm -hmm. um, and so it has an opportunity to really change the way the streetscape looks, the sidewalks, how you know the different art elements come into play. And so that is a really exciting community process. I'm so part of something. Master plan. Yeah, a big master plan. Um, it's been undergoing for about a year. We have oh. about a half year to maybe another, um, around a half year more or so uh -huh. to go to complete that process that will ultimately be adopted by city council. And so we've had okay. more than 6,000 people have submitted input, whether it's through a survey mm -hmm. or many different um workshops going forward and so it's a collaboration amongst many people and there's a state street advisory committee mm -hmm. that's made up of about 15 community members that are supporting this process and i'm one of those people on that committee okay so the advisory committee is taking all of the um sort of comments and feedback from all these thousands of people Plus, I'm, I'm sure you're working with a professional with the master Absolutely. plan. Absolutely. So there's a, a city um, staff person. Okay. Uh, Tess Harris is the master planner mm -hmm. for the city. And then the city has hired a consulting firm called MIG um, and Strategic Economics. So they're collaborating on this process and kind of then shepherding it through. And they have many different experts working on different elements of it because mm -hmm. it's really a big thing to make a downtown tick and so you need a lot of different expertise to pull that together so so you've been working on it for about a year mm -hmm. you say and maybe you've got another six months or so left right so what would you say to someone who's saying hey what what's happening here what you know what, would you say just have a little patience have a little faith that we're you know we were yeah i'd say well first get involved um oh all right get involved and then you know, share your input and then also listen to the input from others because once we bring all of that together into a pot, that's when you get really good solutions. And so it's really making sure that everybody's voices are heard. And, you know, there is a lot of voices being heard right now. <laughs> yes, passionate that's true. community full of um, opinions, but we are a community that gets really involved in civic process. Yes. And so there's a lot of hubbub about yes, what's happening is. downtown. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, there's, uh, you know, what you see now downtown is really not going to be the same way you see it in the future. And so I think what people really want to see change on that, and that change is taking place. There's kind of experimentation going on right now, and over time, more things will get solidified in terms of a proper design, because really we've been operating under sort of a pandemic sort of test that, you know, the community seemed to really like but there's aspects that are not working yet. And so they still need yeah. uh, pivoting innovation and continuation of that process. So you would say to people, come on, get involved and understand that there are other opinions besides yours. Right. And so it'd be a good idea if you listen to mm -hmm. other people and learn, and then let's all work together right. and have faith in the fact that we're going the right direction and uh, all along the way, there will be input by all kinds of people. Absolutely. And we've got experts that are leading the charge. Exactly. Yeah. That's great. Well, all right. So um, 
Well, let's talk about the parklets. There is a Sounds lot of good. Yeah. a lot going on with that. So that was something that also came out of the pandemic, mm -hmm. which is a great opportunity for businesses to be able to span their space outside. And what's crazy and surprising is how much our community didn't have much of that going on before. It only had so many outdoor spaces that people were eating in restaurants. Um, and so, yes, we have um, a number of structures that are uh, along State Street is also um, on some of the side streets that people love or hate, right? And so yes. a lot of people really enjoy them. They're really great for business mm -hmm. and they're great for the community to feel safe and also enjoy the space. Some of the things that people have said that you know are c concerns and are being worked through is how um, some of the structures interfere with seeing the architecture of downtown. And so over time, I think those things will get adapted. Mm -hmm. Over the last something like six months, there were some design uh, requirements that were updated. And so now there's a little bit more uniform look mm -hmm. um, and that will keep changing over okay. time. All right. And so I think um, some of the parklets had to sort of make some changes because of certain amount of restrictions in terms of letting people with disabilities go down the Yeah, so I mean, ADA accessibility is an absolute must. Yes. And yes. so, you know, some of these things were in the beginning made rather made shift and didn't have mm -hmm. everything in order. And so over time, people have needed to get into compliance. And if they didn't, they... Um, ultimately could have um, made modifications. They've been notified number a number mm -hmm. of times. And then after that process, they were able to make an appeal. And ultimately the city council in recent times didn't find that those appeals really um, were appropriate to, de uh, they essentially deny the appeals. And so the whole idea is we want to make these spaces absolutely accessible to all. Yes. And so, you know, those are some of the things that are critical to have a safe and, um, you know, inspired and, you know, economically vibrant space for mm -hmm. all to enjoy. But you also need to make sure that it's accessible for everybody to use. Yes. And so um, those that are out there right now need to have those accessible spaces. And so that's that's been part of the, the process because, you know, whenever you build sort of a normal structure, that is necessary. And so these structures were built and they were intended to be ADA accessible, but not everybody knew how to do that in a quick sure. turnaround. And so now everybody has learned or is tr keep trying to learn because, mm -hmm. you know, that's emergent for folks, but that's something that has um, been a, a topic of conversation. For yes, sure. it sure is. Yeah. yeah, everybody's got an opinion about that. Right, right. Well, let's see. Well, oh, okay, so let's just, before we leave the park list, what about, um, oh, I hear people talk sometimes, uh, parklets, restaurants versus the retail stores, and uh, maybe you could talk a little bit about that. Is Is there really that much of a problem there? You know, retail and restaurants tend to have a synergistic relationship. You would think usually. so. Um, and so when someone comes out to a restaurant, they usually meander and mingle yes, around, yes. Um, in a retail space. Where there's been issues is where um, people may have said yes in the early portion of the pandemic for a business to expand in front of their Mm -hmm. their venue and so in recent history they've needed to readjust those spaces so that they have more visibility for oh. in front of those spaces okay and so restaurants and retailers are are learning to be more um they're already synergistic but w looking for ways to work even more in harmony whether they're offering special perks to a neighboring retailer that they find out about at the restaurant etc but in general i think you know sometimes you see in the media way more conflict than there actually yeah, is really a lot of our businesses work very well together but then sometimes you kind of hear some yeah. higher voices that come out here and there to you know express opinions yeah yeah, yeah. I, I figured that was sure. the case. So really, the the restaurant 
owners and the retailers, they talk to each other all the time and make uh, necessary adjustments. You know, some do and some don't. And oh. we're, we're encouraging people to do more of that. And actually in the near future um, and ongoing, we're establishing more of a, a retail focused collaborative kind of um, committee mm -hmm. in order to further facilitate that. Because during um, the pandemic, the restaurant community really came together um, to work on things that were sort of like life or death for their business at mm -hmm. the time. The retail community didn't do that during the same time. And so now we're trying to build and lift that group up even more support collaborations, neighborhood sort of activations, and then also create more of that synergy between the restaurants. There are pockets of that going on, but there's an opportunity for more. Gotcha. Yeah. All right. So, and what about um, occupancy? So it seems like I read the other day that there were 29 uh, empty spaces on State Street. Is that true? And, and what are we doing to sort of fill those up? Yeah, really good question. So, you know, our downtown, like other downtowns across the nation, have really faced um, a lot of changes in terms of just the the climate for um, business in downtowns, but also um, the amount of office tenants um, is really changed. And so across the nation, you know, people were working out of offices with large businesses. Um, and a lot of those office folks have are either working remotely completely or have only returned to some mm -hmm. degree. And so you're seeing a combination of uh, quite a number of office vacancies, okay. but those contribute to other vacancies because there's not the same level of saturation of workers in the area that go to a restaurant or go yeah. to a retailer. And then there's also change in the economics for retailing as well because of you know things like Amazon or others but um, you know there's a lot of dynamics going on there yeah. and I think that you know we're we're actually doing quite a bit better than some communities mm -hmm. we recently had a conversation with the economic uh, de, uh, economic forecast that UCSB puts mm -hmm. on and you know in comparison to cities like San Francisco New York mm -hmm. urban spaces, have really changed. And I think what we need to do about that as a community is really explore the next phase of downtown. And that's what we're doing with this mm -hmm. master plan mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and trying to invigorate new housing downtown as well as additional uses for these spaces. And so we have a economic development committee. We are trying to create new um, pathways to open doors uh, literally and figuratively with um, the real estate agents and then supportive mm -hmm. networks. Um, we have, there's a lot of really great resources, but bringing those together, whether it's Women's Economic Ventures, the Economic Development Collaborative, mm -hmm. groups like SCORE, helping small businesses get ready to be able to move in because a lot of landlords need to see sort of the the all of the things to pencil out. Mm -hmm. And sometimes a new um, business doesn't have that, and it's harder for them to say yes. And so we're trying to create that entry package that Boy. is a little bit more like, wow, you're supported by all these groups, and you've got your stuff together. They've got the pitch. Um, that is something that's emergent, and I think we're trying to see more of. And we are seeing some success with that, and we're going to, I expect to see more. Wow, that is that's beautiful. That's great. I did I had no idea you were working with them. That that's wonderful. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, lots of good collaboration. Lots of good collaboration. So um, I know there are a lot of initiatives going on. Which let's pick another one and talk about. Okay, so um, we are also working on a community benefit improvement district. Okay. So. Um, these are commonplace across the nation and really the world, but right now we operate under something called a, a business improvement district, mm -hmm. so a, a business-based improvement district, which is a, a fee on a business license, and it goes into sort of a, 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 a fund in order to support downtown. Well, that was started in uh, the 70s, oh, and gosh. it's sort of a an out-of-date um, model. It still works. It still has its value. Mm -hmm. 
Um, but a more common um, best practice is a community benefit improvement district, and it's a it's a way for a district to come together and to essentially self-assess themselves in order to create a certain new fund base to put on to put together more services that that uh, district feels are necessary. And so with that, we've uh, developed a steering committee of um, community members, property owners who want to make this investment mm -hmm. in downtown. And so we've been kind of going through this and evaluating what services folks want to see. And those services range um, from maintenance, um, security, placemaking, branding, mm -hmm. and then um, the programming and services that kind of bring that all together. And so in the next several months, we'll be going out to the community to really share more about this. Mm -hmm. And so this is a parallel process to our master planning process. And collectively, these initiatives really have the opportunity to build the infrastructure that some of the missing infrastructure that's needed to kind of build a downtown and give it the diverse sort of mechanisms that pull the pieces together. It is so complex. It is complex. And here you are, right in the middle of it, <laughs> coordinating all of it. You're it's, pretty amazing. It's a amazing. big team. It's a collaboration. Um, this project is in collaboration with the South Coast Chamber of Commerce. Oh, okay. And a steering committee of something like 15 or so property owners and their conduits to all of their tenants. So it's it's pretty it's pretty exciting. It's a um, we also are working with an expert who's done 92 of these districts across the nation and so really is helping us work through these. There was recently one uh, that's been completed on Coast Village Drive that oh. folks may have heard of and that's just going into fruition. You're starting to see some services there. Well, that's pretty exciting. It really is. Exciting. Sort of a test drive. Right. And then this, ours would expand the district into uh, the funk zone in, in the beach to have some more cohesiveness all the way yeah. down through State Street, um, Chapala, Anacapa, all the way to uh, Garden Street, and then right and left uh, about two blocks on Cabrillo. So that whole area currently has kind of a mix of services that are not um, all the same, and so this would really create the same le level of uh, cleaning, maintenance, you know, landscaping, et cetera, to just kind of have a, a certain high level experience that Santa Barbarans and visitors to Santa Barbara want to see. Gosh. Well, and when you say visitors, you know, I, I think I've read that we have, what, an average 30,000 visitors a day, 360? Yeah, absolutely. Here in Santa Barbara. Yeah, so we have not only the cruise ships come in, but we have many people in the drive market. We have Europeans that are coming in all over the, the market. Visit Santa Barbara is, is the entity that really does great work marketing mm -hmm. our city externally. We kind of do the marketing internal and support our business community, and then they take that information and get it, get it out to the world. Yeah, so, you know, there we have to think about all of our people that are here, but we also have to understand that the visitors, uh, they contribute a lot to our, you know, for our benefit. And so there's, it's a big complex picture that it, you, we have to pull together. It really is. And I think what I think our community really needs to recognize is we have such, we have like world-class cultural institutions, businesses, etc. But we also, you know, minus the tourism, we're a pretty small community. And so our community who actually has dollars to spend in terms of like the age group and that type of thing, you know, we're about 80 or so thousand people, something like 30 to 40,000 people of that spectrum are the ones that are sort of making our businesses run oh. in the community. And so sometimes, you know, we really need to take that into consideration as to how many things we are trying to support locally yeah. as well as bringing in our tourism. So when we had that sort of momentary blip, a lot changed, you know, in yes, the marketplace yeah. and I think it's still changing. Yeah, 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 yeah. But it's an exciting time for downtown. A lot's going on. We're doing 
quite a lot of new programming as well. Um, new music series on uh, often on Wednesdays. We have these Rock the Block block party events yeah. um, that are family oriented and bring people down uh, during the week for a way to highlight different seasonal type mm -hmm. things. So we have anything from a summer fest to a Friendsgiving um, oriented mm -hmm. block mm -hmm. party. We have Halloween oriented ones. So our community definitely likes to celebrate the seasons yes. and likes to come out and enjoy spending time together so we create a lot of opportunities for that while sort of supporting and marketing the whole district yeah so i i think that you i think i heard you say that you're also um oh kind of looking at other cities and downtown other cities downtown area what's working for them what can we learn from them is is that what something absolutely so not well. only the the master plan is looking at those cities as a comparative basis okay. way to kind of evaluate what we might be able to do with cities of similar sizes, cities of um, similar tourism or seasons, that kind of thing. And so we're, we're looking at that and then also, you know, regionally what's going on. But um, yeah, there's a lot of comparisons to be made with, with Boulder, oh. um, some aspects of Copenhagen in some regards because really? there's so much interest in bicycling there. Uh -huh. They're rated, you know, one of the top bicycling cities in the nation. Um, and so there's just a lot of great nuggets of information that we can find from places. And we're exploring all those opportunities. That's great. So now <laughs> when you say bicycles, so there's a lot of people that have different, let's just say different opinions Certainly. about, um, Bikes, no bikes, certain kind of bikes, you know, yes, no, on State Street. Right. What, what, tell us about that. Right. Well, so there's a lot to say about that, but ultimately <laughs> our community really is into active transportation. It's yes. a, absolutely um, a community that really is, you know, it's where we founded Earth Day. It's uh, an environmental community. So there are a lot of people out on bikes and it's a great way to get around in our community really um, is a very bikeable community. And so we do have a lot of bikes uh, that are um, pedestrians and bikes that are coming downtown. And so because we're in this experimental moment with yes, our promenade, yes. there isn't yet a designated sort of path for bikes or for pedestrians. And so it's been, become this kind of meran um, meandering experiment. And so what is next in the process is really testing out different configurations of separation okay. between bikes and pedestrians. And of course, some people don't want any bikes at all in mm -hmm. downtown, but that said, that's not really good for business or good for our city overall because really we are a bike oriented city and so it's finding a way for everybody to work well together mm -hmm. so it's safe it's enjoyable it makes sense not only for the users of bikes or or wheeled uh, devices like scooters and for families to be able to enjoy mm -hmm. and really feel that sort of you know the the feeling that a promenade that word brings just sort mm -hmm. of like a free space to enjoy and feel like a park-like setting. Yeah. Um, and so I think one of the challenges we're facing is right now there's some of that, but there's also not sort of the separation. And mm -hmm. so in order to make this all work, we need to find a way to make that work. Yeah, and I think that it seems to me that the operative word is experimenting. Yes. Because the goal is to get to the, the best solution that works for the most number of people. Absolutely. Right? And so you can come up with some ideas, but then, oh, let's test them to see. And the only way that you're going to find out if it's a good idea or not is to test it. Absolutely. Experiment a little bit. And so there, so once again, maybe some patience or understanding uh, would be helpful from Absolutely. other people. And on the same vein, um, you know, supporting one another and also e-bikes are an emergent new device, yes. you know? And so in the past, you know, when a kid learns how to ride a bike on sort of a traditional bike, it has 
only a certain speed it can go, right? And it takes a certain amount of learning to use it, but it's not as uh, powerful of a device. Mm -hmm. And so now when people are getting these new devices, it's really about educating kids, not only in schools, but families about how to ride respectfully. Yes, yes, yes. Because, you know, these kids are on something and adults and everybody, but they get a a vehicle that's like got some speed and they're going to try it out, (laughs) but they don't have a driver's license yet. They haven't had education around biking. And so I think that that's an emergent thing for all communities that yes, they're yes. grappling with. So it's not just a Santa Barbara thing, um, but I think our community is seeing that play out in sort of our our heart of our community. And so they're just sort of seeing a phenomenon yeah. that is happening across the nation. That's a good thing in, to remember. In, you know, real time. Yeah. And so I think we're going to see that change over time. I know that the city's working on a, a new ordinance to support with more of a safe sort of speed and you know educational element there so i think we're going to see that be coming out too okay so so you think there's a oh kind of an effort to educate the kids and parents too yeah. uh about responsible bike riding right right so th- are there groups doing that or ha- yeah how absolutely happening? so there's um, what used to be the Santa Barbara Bicycle Coalition oh, yes. and uh-huh. the Coalition for Sustainable Transportation have merged, and now they've become an organization called Move Santa Barbara. Mm. And so they do a lot of uh, bike education in schools and in camps and things of that nature. Um, and so they're they're taking a, a leadership effort in that space. Also. Um, it's something that the schools are aware of and they're taking initiative Mm -hmm. uh, to some degree as well. And so we're also looking at how other cities have um, done some of these initiatives and sometimes they have to take a course in a school Mm -hmm. to get a sort of a safety certificate to be able to ride their e-bike to school, which also sort of helps them to ride safely through the community. Yeah. That's that's a great idea. What about the um, vendors of the bicycles, the the bike shops? Are, are they doing anything to, uh, I don't know, educate the kids? You know, I think it's emergent. I think that they uh-huh. are realizing that that's um, a space that they might be able mm-hmm. to contribute more. And we just actually had a new business open up that sells a lot of our sort of um, e-bikes that... I think is going to probably have some aspect of being a positive contributor yeah. to this conversation for sure. That is great. All right, so so um, there's so much going on. I, I bet if a person wants to find out more about any of these topics, or if they want to make a financial, a tax deductible financial donation, they can go on your website and find out about volunteer, how they can volunteer, how they can be a part of uh, gathering information, giving their opinions, or contributing any expertise they have. There's a lot, I bet, on your website. Absolutely, we have not only a database and sort of a way that you can uh, explore all of the, our different businesses in the district. We represent more than 1,700 businesses mm-hmm. in the downtown. But we also have volunteer opportunities at our events and programs, whether we're doing downtown cleanup days, um, what we call beautification days, Uh which are cleaning up a little bit of extra garbage here and there, and then also trying to remove any graffiti and just really create a space that people want to return to all the time. And so lots of programming. We're always looking for sponsors to support Mm -hmm. our programming and also special initiatives that we can help um, lift up our our business community, as well as creating uh, programs that our community really wants to see. Great. Wow, Robin, you've got so much going on. Thank you so much for all the work that you're doing that benefits all of us. Thank you for giving me an opportunity to talk about it today. Well, thanks for coming on the show. Of course. And thanks for joining us on 805 Focus, and we'll see you next time.